Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a cantilever beam. Let us read the question and write the given data. A cantilever beam projects 3 meter beyond the fixed end. The clear span is given as 3 meter. It carries a working live load of 15 kN per meter. The live load is given as 15 kN per meter. Use M20 concrete and FE 415 steel. FCK is 20 and FOE is 415. First, we have to design the size of the beam. From the IS 456 codebook, page number 37, we need to take the span to effective depth ratio. For cantilever, it is 7. In the question, the clear span is given as 3 meter. We can convert that into millimeter. So it will be 3000. 3000 upon 7. We will get 428.57. Let us round this as 450. So we are going to keep the effective depth as 450. Let us assume that the effective cover is 50 millimeter. So the overall depth D will be 450 plus 50. We will get 500. Let us assume the width of the beam B. As 300 millimeter, we have to find the effective span. In the page number 35, it is given that the effective length of a cantilever shall be taken as its length to the face of the support plus half the effective depth. The clear span is 3 meter, the effective depth is 450 millimeter. We can convert that into meter, it will be 0.45. In this way, for the effective span, we will get a 3.23 meter. The next step is to find the factored load. First, we need to find the self weight of the beam with the unit weight of the concrete that is 25 kN per meter cube. We have to multiply the overall depth D and the breadth B. We have to convert them into meter and then multiply. In this way, we will get a 3.75. The live load is given in the question as 15. So the total load will be 3.75 plus 15. We will get 18.75. To find the factored load WU, we have to multiply this with 1.5. In this way, we will get 28.125 kN per meter. Now we are going to find the ultimate moment and shear. We know that in the case of a cantilever beam, Subjected to uniformly distributed load for the full span, the maximum moment occurs in the fixed end and it will be W into L into L upon 2. So it will be W L square upon 2. Also, the maximum shear force occurs in the fixed end that will be W into L. W just before we have calculated. For L, we have to apply the effective span. For the moment, we will get 146.71 and for the shear force, we will get 90.84. Then we have to find the limiting moment of resistance. Our FI is 415. For that, the formula is 0.138 BD square FCK. After applying all of the values, we will get this. We can divide this by 10 power 6. So that we will get the value in kN meter. Previously, we have calculated the moment of resistance. It is less than the limiting moment of resistance. So the section is under reinforced. Then we are going to find the area of the tension steel reinforcement. From the page number 96, we can copy this formula. After applying all of the values, we will get this equation. Using the calculator, we can solve the equation for the AST. We will get this. Otherwise, if you can memorize this formula, we can get AST directly. Now, we have to check for the minimum AST. From the page number 46, we have to copy this. And we can modify that like this. In this one, we can apply all of the values. We will get this. Previously, we have calculated this AST which is greater than this. So we have to proceed with this AST. When we try with the three numbers of 22 millimeter diameter bars, we are getting this AST. 
little more than this. So let us provide three numbers of 22 millimeter diameter boss in the tension side. Also let us provide two numbers of 12 millimeter diameter hanger boss. Then we have to apply the check for shear stress. From the page number 72 we can copy this uh, formula. The shear force is 90.84 kN. We know that 1 kilo is 1000. For tau V, we will get 0.67. Using this formula, we need to find the percentage of the tension reinforcement. For that, we will get 0.84. In the code book, we need to open page number 73. Our PT is 0.84. 0.84 comes between 0.75 and 1. Our FCK is 20. So we need to copy these two values. For PT 0.84, we need to find tau C. We can do interpolation. This value plus this minus this upon this minus this into 0.84 minus 0.75. For tau C, we will get 0.58. Just before, we have calculated tau V as 0.67. Tau V is greater than tau C. In this case, uh, shear reinforcement is required. Let us provide two legged 8 mm diameter bars. So, the area of the vertical stirrups will be 100.53 mm square. Using this uh, formula, we can find VUS. And we can copy this uh, formula. And we can modify that like this. In the formula, after applying all of the values, we will get the spacing as 1302.5. Now we have to check for the minimum shear reinforcement. We can modify this formula like this. And then we have to apply all of the values. We will get 302 millimeter. Just before we have found this spacing. And now we have found this. Out of these two, we have to select the minimum one. 302 is the minimum one. Now we have to apply the check for spacing. This is what we have found just before. Then 0.75D. For that we will get 337.5 and then 300. From these three, we have to select the minimum one. 300 is the minimum one. So we are going to provide two legged 8 mm diameter stirrups at the spacing of 300 mm. Now we need to find the development length. From the page number 42, we need to copy this formula. In the formula, sigma s will be 0.87 FY. We can apply that. FY is 415. Phi is the diameter of the rebar in the tension zone. We have kept the rebar as 22 mm diameter. From the page number 43, we can take the value of tau BD. For M20, it is 1.2. But if you are using deformed bars, that can be increased by 60%. We are using FE415 deformed bar. So we can increase by 60%. That is why we are multiplying with 1.6. For the development length, we will get 1034 mm. The main reinforcement is extended into the column for a length of 500 mm and is bent down to 90 degree and then extended into 500 mm. For the bent portion, let us use 8 mm diameter bar. The formula to find the bent length is 8 to 5. 5 is the diameter of the tension rebar that is 22. So 8 into 22, we will get 176 millimeter. 500 plus 500 plus 176, we will get the total length of the development length, that is 1176 millimeter. So this length is adjusted into this length. Now we are going to apply the check for deflection. From the page number 38, we need to copy this formula. This is the required AST and this is the provided AST. FY is 415. For FS, we will get this. PT, we have calculated as 0.84. Approximately at 0.84, we have to draw a vertical line. Our FS is 228. It comes between 190 
and 240. So we have to extend the line in between both of the curves. From this point, we have to draw a horizontal line. This point can be taken as 1.1. We know that for a cantilever beam, the basic value of span to effective depth ratio is 7. With that, we have to multiply the modification factor k. For d, we will get 419.48. Our effective depth is 450, which is greater than that. So the section is safe against deflection. Here you can see the reinforcement details. This is the development length. This length is 500 millimeter. This length is also 500 millimeter. And the bend up portion is 176 millimeter. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.